I was nodding the whole whole time while you shared about how it is so important for us to for youth ministers to share the basics, the retelling of the narratives in the Bible Bible story, and also um, allowing the space for youth to share their own story. Mm. Um, realistic, realistically, what I feel is that it seems like it's almost impossible to shift the paradigm of the family culture unless no. the parents are involved in this um, doing this shifting of paradigm together in family. Mm. Um, how could young, uh, how could youth minister uh, actively engage with parents' invo- mm. involvement yeah. and uh, their faith formation? Yeah, I guess there's two things that I would say that I hope are connected. Um, one is just having a 15-year-old myself, a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old, um, and like being, I guess, a quote-unquote professional at this and being married to an ordained mm-hmm. pastor. This is not easy. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I'm not sure that if you spent three wor- weeks looking into my family that you say, oh, yeah, they, they have it figured out. I think you'd probably find the opposite. So this isn't mm-hmm. easy. So I, I would say that if you try to pick it up when your kids are 12 and 15, or as youth workers we try to say, to parents in middle school or the high school ministry, it's now time that you tell these stories mm-hmm. to young people mm-hmm. and do this. It's too late. Mm-hmm. It really has to start younger. And mm-hmm. that's why I just think the divides between children's ministry, youth ministry, and then um, all the other forms of ministry are, are just, are not as helpful uh, to us. And we have to be aware that things are, are, are uh, we need to get beyond those, those, those boundaries and those barriers. Mm-hmm. So I think that that has to start, like narrating the experience mm-hmm. of faith has to start much mm-hmm. younger mm-hmm. Um, in helping mm-hmm. helping um, people do that, uh, helping parents do that, and how they, it starts with them kind of telling their own story. Mm-hmm. And so that would be my second point, is that it is about helping young people hear the biblical story again. And to allow, but it's, it's more than that, it's a, allowing the biblical story to start reading young people's lives. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's one thing, and I would say it's pretty boring to take a group of young people and then like read I don't know, re- read the Exodus story. Mm-hmm. All right, got the facts, fine. Mm-hmm. Kind of boring next to the fact that you could be on your phone doing all sorts of other things. Um, pretty hard to keep your attention. But it's profound if Marilyn, the 75-year-old woman, comes in and tells, says my favorite biblical text is the Exodus story. Because mm-hmm. when my husband Hank was going through cancer and we were trying to get him through his chemo, mm-hmm. we would read this story. Mm-hmm. And this story helped me get through those long days of chemotherapy with mm-hmm. my husband. Well, all of a sudden, the text, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the text starts to read her life. Mm-hmm. And her own story is laced in with this story. And the text starts to live. Mm-hmm. And then the young people, I think, the potential for them to use that story to help read their own lives mm-hmm. and to read their lives inside that story becomes really significant. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the invitation for those things to come together, I mm-hmm. think. Wow, thank you very much.